Next, the parents of a six-year-old boy are taking, they say, legal action against their son's school after another boy was allowed to change his gender. Nigel and Sally Rowe have withdrawn their son from the Church of England school on the Isle of Wight, saying parents weren't properly consulted and it clashes with their own Christian beliefs. Two years ago, they removed their eldest son from the same school in a separate row about a different transgender child. Nigel and Sally came in to see me earlier and I asked them what was the problem. Um, we're concerned for the fact that um, six six-year-old children are being exposed to uh, this 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 uh, social construct in in genderism, and um, we feel that it's far too young. Um, that you know, when you become a teenager or you know, as a, and as an adult, you'll be able to make a good informed decision of what you want to do in your life. It's all free will, that sort of thing. But um, our concern is that with children so young, we're, we're concerned that. It not only just affects those children, but it affects the other children within the class. It's, we just think it's not the right thing to be doing at such a young age at primary school. And Sally, this is something you say has affected your six-year-old, but you have an eight-year-old who was in this school right. that you took out. Yes. So it begs the question, why did you put your six-year-old back in that school? He's in a different class. He's in a different class. The same school, with the same attitudes towards this kind of thing. Uh, what attitudes are we talking about? Well, the attitudes yes. that you're not happy yes. about. So I wonder yes. why you... I Having taken your eldest son out yeah. of this school, put your six-year-old in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, our older son was really struggling and he was becoming ill, actually, and, and under stress, and we took him out for that reason. Our younger son wasn't aware of the situation. And I think the thing is, we love the school, we love the people, we love the staff. We're very involved in the school. We've been doing assemblies, we've been doing lots of different things in the school. We're very much part of the community. Um, and although we had these concerns, we felt that our younger son wasn't affected by that at, at the time, yes. You say you love the school yes. and you love a lot of what they stand yes. for. Yeah. This is, is this coming about because of your Christianity? Yeah, we are committed Christians. Well, yeah. Christianity says love thy neighbour. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we do love our neighbour. And we do even, love Even people. if they are gender fluid or if they decide to Absolutely. change their yes. birth, Absolutely, whatever, whoever they are, whatever, they, whatever race, colour. Yeah. They're the, friends. They're friends. And, and, yeah. and um, it, it, that is what the Christian faith is about, is loving your neighbour. You're quite right. There's no, we, there's no persecution. In fact, if anything, we're really the ones receiving the persecution. Um, there's no persecution towards other people who are struggling with gender uh, dysphoria and things like that. But that, that's what the issue is here, that we're concerned, you know, how it's being dealt with. But it seems that you're not, no one's persecuting you from where I'm sitting, but people are trying to understand why you can't accept that these people exist in the world, no matter how old or young they are. And I speak as a father of mm. an eight and an almost six-year-old, so I know you have to have these difficult conversations. Mm. And they are different to previous generations. And at some point, and perhaps sooner rather later, you're going to have to explain to your children that some people, a certain proportion, are not happy with the gender they're born into. Yeah, but again, it comes down to the age. I don't think a six-year-old is able mentally be able to work that kind of stuff. There's such a young age. Mm -hmm. When you get, as I say, when you get to a teenager, uh, you know, you and you, become, you, you know, you're going through puberty, you have a you have a greater understanding of these things and work these things out. Yes, but it, it's too young. It, it's just so young. But it, but clearly for this other individual, Sally, it's not too young, and it's not too young for their parents. Maybe this child is experimenting. Maybe this child will will stay yeah. with the sex they were born into at some point anyway. But well, that's this a, is this a, I think the thing is, we, we think the forum of, of doing it within a school setting, um, it's, they're, they're, putting on, they're made vulnerable and the, it's just not the right setting. We think but, that they should, they should, you know, if they have a gender confusion, they should be supported. But it wasn't that long ago that homosexuality <laughs> couldn't even be talked about in schools. And that seems so wrong now when Gay people are not being persecuted like they were anymore, and rightly so, for just loving another mm. person. Mm. It's a, society is changing, but I think here, you see, for us the issue was it was the consultation with it. So these children were, were allowed to come into the school on that particular day, I mean, and uh, there was the, the, we, no, the parents weren't consulted. There, there, there was no, there, there were no, there was no discussion. Well, if they were, if you were consulted, uh, you would have said no. 
So maybe that's I say, why I would, they... I, I would have said that, yeah, we, we did have a problem with and it. Look, yeah. we, we have a, a statement from uh, the, uh, the Director of Education from where you live saying, among other things, this requires schools to accept the wishes of children and their families re with regard to gender identity. It would be unlawful for any of our schools to do otherwise. So that's why they can't ask other parents. It's against the law to say, for you to say, well, no, we're not happy about this. Well, no, it's apparently not. it's not, because the gender, the, the gender Act apparently states that you... Come, is, is, is for at, at the age of 18, and then you have to prove it for then two years that you have and become transgender. Part. Not not for not for such young children, not the age of six. And all the and the, the Equality Act it covers people like ourselves as well, and our opinions. I feel when we when we talk to the school and we we then did a letter with our concerns the letter back was very staunch. We just have to accept it. This is the way we have to do it. That's it. Um, but then we weren't, our views weren't taken on board, our concerns weren't taken on board, so we feel we are being persecuted in, in, in that way. And also, it states that if we can't recognise that a boy is actually a real girl, then that we are seen as transphobic, which seems very staunch and very strong, when, when you know, it, our views are a boy is a boy, a girl is a girl. Have you met many transgender people? Mm. A few. A uh, few, very, yeah, very okay. few, yeah. And have they maybe explained mm. to you how they feel? I mean, w one of the phrases is often uh, used is that sex is between someone's legs and gender is between their ears, i.e. their physical being doesn't necessarily mean that's the way they feel about themselves. Yeah, mm. but, I mean, again, is this a new... Is it, I, I have to put it this way, is this a new social day, a new social mm. construct? Clearly, when someone well, maybe, is born... Maybe it's always been there since biblical times. It's just not been talked it, about. When you're much. born, you're born a boy, you're born a girl. You can see it within the physical side of a, of a human being and also within the DNA, within the... You know, you, you can clearly see but, between... But you, you know being a human is not black or white. It's a big grey area in between, isn't there it? There is. Yeah, th there is. Yeah, everybody's different. But again, it comes down to, f for us, that I think it's just too, too young. And I think that exposing all the... Um, or accepting, as Sally was saying, that we have to accept um, this kind of new social construct. Yeah, we, we find that very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we believe that it needs to be debated. Uh, there are many yeah. parents throughout the whole of the UK that are struggling with this. Mm -hmm. You know, we were interviewed today and they, they, there was a quick online poll and it was 50-50. 50% of the population said they did have a problem with it and 50% of the population said they didn't. So the, clearly there needs to be a debate. It needs to go to government because the law isn't really, really clear, I believe. We are glad that you've come in to debate it with us today. Thank we you. hope you don't feel persecuted and it's no, not something we, we want to do, be, but yeah. it's interesting to have the yeah. conversation yeah. about this. And please do talk to us again about it as well. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you very much.